suspects going as far but the energy is pretty pretty awesome nah, i dig it it's an amazing atmosphere today and now five games i mean what more can you ask for what more can you ask for indeed i think bds wanted to ask for a little less yeah, yeah probably but i mean it, it, it is what it is like the ball, ball were totally in their court and i don't think that they for example that game three i think will play them more than the game four did here do you agree no i think this game four is going to play them okay. fully. <laughs> like they had this game in their hands i think the nuke had such an amazing performance in the series solo killing and shane killing his arena solo and then their Ash and Nautilus, that were supposed to be winning lane, actually got 2v2 kid level 3. Oh, true, actually. And yeah. I think that's very unacceptable. This something like this should not happen. I think, actually, this will be very terrible for BDS Mental State. I mean, also, when they look uh, across to Fnatic, and Fnatic, again, not able to kind of string too many kills together in the early game. In fact, they were dying a lot, you know. Uh, Aurelian Stoll gets off to a horrible, horrible start, but then they turn it around. Yeah, and I mean, I think it first off comes of what you're talking about, Well, in the, the 2v2 down in the bot side, the fact that June finds that 2v2, uh, the hook in that minion wave. I mean, it looked ridiculous, <laughs> completely illegal, but somehow he finds it, and that really propels that bot lane ahead. I think the skirmishes that allowed the Callista to get into the game made it so much that even though the Asir had the kills in the early game, it did not matter compared to the early game threat Callista was. No one June really was alive to the darkness this game. I think they created some, they squeezed water out of a the stone, they created a lead for uh, Fnatic when there shouldn't be a lead at all. Uh, and I think they snowballed so well. They managed to fight on the second Drake and then eventually on the Herald fight where we got a pentakill. I think it was over after that. Oh, I love the way you said that. Water from a stone in terms of the bot lane. And I like that you call out Jun alongside Noah, but let's take a look at his pentakill though. Um, Super insane in terms of momentum also for this series. But yeah. I think it's also the build-up for the fight. You can see how BDS is kind of splitting, but Fnatic is finding the perfect pincer maneuver with Humanoid just coming in at the back line. And this A-Soul should have been completely useless here, yeah. but he's not. And crucially, Aurelius Soul gets the big ult during the fight. He was free stacks off leading into the fight, and he gets the free stacks he needs it, and gets his massive ult in the end of the fight that just helps Noah get his spend the kill in the end. Yeah, I mean, amazing, amazing, I, amazing. I, I can't believe they even went for it here, because you, you're already one game down in a series. Going for a pentakill like this, like normally you just take the kill because you need to take I mean, yeah. the kill. Need to move on. Rasag really wanted to take the kill. He, he said, I don't did. care. He he got killed by it, yeah. Did he want to or was he setting up the Penta? We'll never know. Uh, but when it comes to Noah, though, uh, I, I think, you know, we've been a little bit hot and cold about him, I think. Uh, but in the postseason, in the playoffs particularly, also last week versus Heretics, where he had a clutch performance and that 1v4, etc. Finn, you know, he's really growing into that role and he's stepping up when it matters most. That guy is clutch. <laughs> he is clutching so many games for Fnatic right now. I think he's just... When the crunch time comes, he always manages to find his crazy place. He's bringing them back into the game when so everything seems lost. Yeah, and what seems even more impressive for Fnatic is normally they're uh, an emotional team as well. So they kind of ramp up with, if it's going bad, well, it's looking bad for us. But if it's starting to go good, it's going to look even better. So a player like Noah getting a pentacle like this, the fact that you're on the verge of reverse sweeping BDS, this is where Fnatic is looking the scariest going into a game five. You said the words. You said them. Reverse sweep. Uh, we looked into kind of how many times Fnatic has reverse swept for some reason, because I thought they were so clutch, they do it all the time. Last time, actually, was only uh, the first time. Oh, when? Uh, it was 2022 Summer Playoffs versus Excel. Oh. 
Oh, no, 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 so, no, no, no. Finn, <laughs> you were on Excel, so you are uniquely positioned to tell us both how Fnatic will clutch that game five and how BDS should repel it. Um, oh, I hate to bring that back up, by the way. That's a terrible series to remember. But uh, I do remember that Rasark was very clutch and the uh, Humanoid was very clutch, and they clutched out in the game five. And with the momentum they have right now, I really think it should be Fnatic favorite. You think so? Yeah. You're changing your prediction then. I mean, I did predict 3 1. So yeah, my did. prediction is already it's doing. down the train. Yeah, yeah, I'm out of switch sides. I mean, Silver Scrapes kind of means all bets off, but we do have to look at BDS and who they came into this series so incredibly confident. They were great games one and two. They were on match point. You called it out then. They've been reverse swept before. To get back from that hole in terms of the mental is really, really difficult. But that's why they have to show their growth, all right? As a team, you need to evolve, you need to get better. The failures need to make you better. What you've been through in the past has to define your future. So for BDS at a point like this, where they're on the verge to get reverse swept again, when they're looking to lose out on MSI, they need to find a way to mental reset, but not only that, find discipline in the game to turn an early game lead into a victory like the one they had in game four. You can't let it get to your head. You need to go back to what works and for you. I would love to be a fly in the wall in the BDS coaching room right now. I would love to hear what Stryker is saying to BDS and what he said to bring them back into speed right now because you need a mental reset. You need to get back onto Earth, root downs in the ground, and just focus on what's in front of you. You're one game from MSI. You can still make it. You can still make it. It's the best of one at this point, right? A lot of the Fnatic fans here are really loud. They're aren't as many BDS fans, but they're also really loud. I know there's a lot of family in the crowd as well. And it's what you said, you only have to really win this game. Now, they made a, cha they made a change. BDS chose to move on to the red side for game five. What are your thoughts? Very interesting, because I thought their drafts were not the problem. But there is now there's the tally going back into it again. Like, are they going to ban the tally? Are they going to give it over? I think they're going to ban the uh, give, leave the tally open and pick R into it. That is my theory. I think they also just want some stability in the lanes, knowing what you're picking into, not necessarily blind picking every time, and making sure you can find your bot lane at an even footing or getting ahead as well, or finding Shio in a counter matchup in the jungle. I know it must have felt difficult or a little uncomfortable playing the Sinsao into a Jax. And even though the early game didn't go as well for Rasa going into it, it's still something where you want to see Shio unleashed. You want to see She'll do what Rassork usually does so well. Okay, are they looking just for a counter pick on R5? And do you think maybe Adam says, this is my chance? I, mean, I think when you go red side, you can't choose what you play, yeah. but you can always choose an answer to what the enemy is playing, right? So they kind of value that high right now. In crunch time, they want to be able to choose their matchups. They want to be able to choose the champions they're playing in the most crucial game. Okay, and maybe that is the correct choice. Only time will tell. This is the game that sends either Fnatic or BDS to the mid-season Invitational. Music on a beat. Side of the camera, come this way. Come this way. I'm just flabbergasted <laughs> that I can't. Uh, it's an exciting time. Uh, one of two things is about to happen. First thing is a pause. No. Or a break. Yeah. One of the two. Why would you stop that? Uh, no, one of two things is about to happen. BDS is about to make history as being the fourth ever organization from Europe to represent us at MSI. Alternatively, Fnatic will once again reverse sweep BDS. I say once again. BDS will be reverse swept in a spring playoffs for the second time. In uh, two years. In two years. Um, and Fnatic will return to the MSI stage, which has been a while. 2018 was the last time they were here. So BDS either make history or repeat history. Yes. It's the only two ways. Pretty that it much. Yeah. <laughs> well, here we go. We jump into the final draft of the day. Ariana and Zeri taken away from the side of Fnatic. You have to imagine that Tilly is a very high priority pick. Will BDS choose to ban it away or are they going to leave it open? Varus is a pretty important ban here because it leaves open. Well, what it does is it denies what is an effective answer into the Zaya. So BDS are telling Fnatic, you need to value the Zaya pick more. But the, the question is, Fnatic might have more tools in their kit to say, we're fine, we're dealing with the Zaya uh, through our other options. But the question then comes, what happens to the Talia? Where does it fall in terms of the totem pole? Well, with the Callista ban as well, I think it feels very hard to just not go for an AD carry in the first rotation. Unless Ice wants to try and fall back towards something like the Jinx, um, which we haven't really seen pop up. We know we saw it in a little bit of the other series. But maybe that's just the option that, like, hey, you take Zaya, we'll still go with the Jinx, look to outrange you in a lot of team fights, especially if you end up taking the Talia here for Fnatic and you want to go with the Azir on the other side. I think you can play a range with the uh, with the, the Zaya Talia. 
Yeah. Oh, Talia's still sorry, available sorry, Talia. for yeah. Fnatic if they want to first pick It's really it. the debate between Zyra and Talia right now. What do Fnatic want to prioritize? You can see the discussion is coming through. Where will they go? Because they really thrived when they've had this aggressive early game. Rel they've been able to make pick. plays in the early game. Rel wow. locked in for them. Okay, I wasn't expecting that at all. BDS, if they want to, they can just grab Talia's eye, which is exactly what they did in the first two games. I think if you're Fnatic, personally, I think this is a bit of a mistake to give BDS both. I imagine BDS was expecting both the Zyre and the Tal or one of the two to be taken away from them. So now the debate comes through as to what it's going to be, and they're going to, of course, they're going to grab the Zyre. The question now becomes, do they want to pair this alongside a jungler? I mean, you would imagine so. The question is, if Fnatic come up with an answer of their own. I was also going to say, potentially take the Rakan here. Liberal, the Nautilus didn't look so hot in the last game. So always the opportunity to just fall back and get some comfort for him. Zyra Khan, strong bot lane. Um, and he's able to have a good amount of impact because they will take the Talia. But I think there is an option here to, okay. Oh, don't play that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a... So the thing is, I was talking to Medic about this earlier. When Humanoid brought out this Diana, he then didn't have a good time, hadn't had a good time in solo queue. He then went home and tried to play it again, didn't have a good time in solo <laughs> queue. So. Yeah. I'm glad to see he's going to swap away over I don't Zier. love Azir. I think that Ari would have been a better pick, especially into things like the Zyre as well. But uh, looks like that's the direction they're going to go. Zeri isn't going to be an answer, which is what they usually used in the first two games. With Varus gone too, what is their AD carry lock-in? They want to keep the Rel as a potential flex, so I don't expect them to see, oh, they're just going to get the Rek'Sai for Oscar, and they're going to leave their AD carry to later on in the draft. I think it's similar to what you said in game four. Maybe they're just thinking, hey, we can go for the uh, Lucian Nami on this next rotation for the last one, but you are always worried that it's just going to be bad to leave. Coming into this next one, next draft, especially with the Kalista already gone, Ash still available. I think if you ban Ash and you ban the Lucian Nami, you're looking at maybe a Kaisa. We're going back to, what was it, 2017? So the other one is Ezreal. Ezreal, true, Ezreal, yeah. I mean, Jinx, also a possibility Jinx, if you want it. Uh, it's low mobility, it's, yeah. it's also just like a really rough matchup into the Zaya. Of course, Rakan doesn't get this. Potentially. I mean, sure, there's lots of yeah, AD carries in theory, Vayne, right? Yeah, yeah. Draven. <laughs> yeah, Tristana, Draven, there's a Vayne. Like, uh, if one of those comes up now, Zana. I'm a Savant. Yeah. 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 Zen. Zen uh, but there's Lucian Band, so... BDS on a very similar wavelength to what we were discussing. The Darius going to be taken away from Adam. Olaf wouldn't be, wouldn't surprise me if we also saw that come through. Mm -hmm. Just because when you think about some of the Rumble, actually Rumble though, I think the Rumble is one of the best matchups into the uh, Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai, that's the word I was looking for. Thank you, Medic. So they've got a few options available, and it's going to be the Jinx. All right. So BDS just taking away some of the. Comfort picks for Noah. He's been really limited now. That's 580 carry bands across the pool. So what is he going to go for? My my instincts say Ez. The rail is going to go into the jungle, and they're going to play like a long range front to back comp with. Yeah, I think there's an option to go maybe towards like a poke Kais as well. Try and swap the rail down into the support role and then take an AD jungler, which potentially could be a Jax. Honestly, if you end up going towards the Zin Zhao, so at least you have some on hit damage in your build as well, or in your composition, but... Yeah, it's there a tough one. Shao, as you say, I see the Kaiser angle. Although, Razork, I mean, both of these both of these guys have played the well once, so... We'll see. So we'll Ezreal. just Ezreal. Yeah. All right, the, now the question becomes, what do you pair with it on support? Because I think Rel is fine, but in... I'm kind of stumped, I will be honest, because, like, Rel support Nautilus, right? to get yourself a better no jungle bard, matchup doesn't make sense. Over Nasa if you really want the disengage. I actually think Bard might be the play medic. Oh. Oh. Nautilus, fine. <laughs> this is also fine. Just providing more utility. You've kind of got a two-threat composition with Azir and um, Ezreal. I think the, the value in Rek'Sai is that he's just very obnoxious, sticks to the back line. We're going to get a Zac out from Adam. Uh, a little unconventional, something, again, we don't see from him, but expanding his pool, acting as that frontline engage, top lane tank for the team. 
It is a matchup we saw earlier today as well in the LCK. As they are bringing Zach into the XR. The thing is, though, I traditionally like Zach when you see less mobile carries. Mm -hmm. Zier with the mana the ability to shuffle away, Ezra with the arcane shift. It makes it really difficult to actually lock down these carries. Like if you had a Huey or a Talia or something like or a Jinx on the opposite side, I'd be more of a fan of it. It'll do fine. Like you will control that top lane matchup for Adam, but the value he gets in the later fights may not be as high. It does give you a good engage potential for the Rakan, though. So if the Zac jumps true. in, the Ezreal true. dashes away, the Rakan then, you know, ults, ease the Zac and the jumps onto the yeah. Ezreal. So uh, I mean, it's always going to be tricky to lock something like an Ezreal down. Yeah. I think that BDS should be happy that they've gotten a winning formula. This is the type of draft that they've won with in their first two games. Uh, having Nuke on Talia gives them so much objective control and their ability to attack sides. And Nuke honestly has had the better of Humanoid pretty much consistently throughout the series when it comes to the laning phase. Whereas for Fnatic, I think that Noah is really feeling it. He's in the zone right now. And we think back to when he's been able to have big carry performances. It was on champions like this. My concern for Fnatic comes from the fact that I don't think Razork is on a huge playmaking champion. So we'll see how effective Fnatic can be in the early game. It's do or die for both BDS and Fnatic. A spot at MSI. A spot in the finals tomorrow against G2. All on the line. This game is going to decide it all. Winner takes it all. BDS, how many minds at the moment are thinking, not again. The same as last year. They went 2-0 up, lost to Mad Lions. Koi in the finals, didn't make it to MSI. Fnatic, it's been a long time since they were able to make it to our Spring International Tournament. And what a fight it would have been for them to get there. After being 0-2 down, they reverted to the style that has worked so well for them this year. And it continues to work for them. This comp, though, a little bit less towards that style than the last couple of games. A little bit less early aggression from the jungle. Can still, obviously, enact it. But doesn't have that same go power that we saw in games 3 and 4. I do think, though, this is one of Razor's best champions. Even though it may not be a hey, I'm as traditional of engage and set up and damage oriented as say like a volley bear, just his ability to track the enemy jungler, find these counter engages, set up then as well. He has been so strong on this realm and it's been denied from him for so long. So I think this is the moment where Fnatic, can they piggyback off the success of the last two games? Or as you say, will BDS finally be able to rewrite their history? So. Look at early pathing from our junglers. Starting on the top side for Razor, along with Shale. Bit of information gained as to where he starts. Jun does connect on to with a hook, but uh, nothing too crazy. That's just about Fnatic getting control of the bot wave in order to get pushed. Naturally, Nuke gonna have the push in the mid wave as we expect. Two sustained bots on the top side. I will argue that Rexite sustained much stronger for her in terms of the early trading, thanks to the Fury Bar, whereas Adam very much relying on being able to secure those blobs, which you can see Oscar Rennen fighting him for. But uh, I don't expect too much volatility in that top side as both top laners just kind of hit each other with a wet blanket. And Nuke's there, just checking the Razor Beaks to see if they could track Razzle's path, a defensive ward as well, uh, on those Razor Beaks from Fnatic, in case Shao did look for the invade. And they've been spotted on this ward. As you can see, they've hit it a couple of times, which means BDS know it's there. That's the biggest worry for Fnatic right now is that they, yes, they know where Shao started, but they don't know what his path was after that. Could have gone um, into his bot side, could have gone to look for an invade on the red, uh, but with no real push in the bot side, uh, they're not really going to be overly worried about having the defensive tools that they need to secure that. And now Humanoids, just taking a little bit of damage there from Nuke in the mid. Uh, Nuke on the Taleo in the first two games really put Humanoid in his I mean, place. I'm just going to say, Nuke has been beating Humanoid every single game yeah, in lane. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, Humanoid's scoreline at the end of the last game, <laughs> but he was really good. So. I mean, he solo killed him on the Azir <laughs> Soul matchup, and then when it was the reverse, Humanoid versus Nuke, it didn't help that Humanoid took a chunk away when he fought Adam in the top lane on his Darius. But even then, Nuke was very quick to take advantage of that and then started bullying out Humanoid in the 1v1 as well. So... Nuke overall having a great series. Should be very happy with his performance. Oh, Lebrov going in with a flash. Engage here. Shell coming in from the side as well. Good double stun. Ice locked up. Lebrov to burst to fall. And Fnatic haven't even had their health bars tickled by BDS. Shale has to flash away. The chase continues. John with a double. The Riptide ripping. 
true BDS and Fnatic pounce on an over-eager engage from BDS. BDS thought they saw their moment to take control in the early stages, but you just can't go against Razork on this rail. Great response with the double lockup and the follow-up damage from Noah's clean. A huge advantage gained for Fnatic in the early game. You have to think that when the... Oh! Adam. I don't know if Adam is dead here. here. He's too close to the damage, tower, yeah. too close to the tower. He's going to take a decent amount of his life, but... Do you kill him or No, 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 he has too much healing. <laughs> but the question now, jungle, jungle, away, jungle, jungle. Yeah. That's the call that's being made from the top laners. Razork on his way, Sheo here to cover. Adam wards it, Sheo. In the vicinity, Adam still has the flash here. Razzle looking for the stun. Flash, double knocker with a stretching strike into the elastic center. Really? Beautifully oh. done by Adam. That was a nice outplay. Adam gets proactive on the play, connects the Q initially. I thought the knockup would ruin the play for him, but he's able to spawn a bunch of blobs off the connection of the two Qs, and that then gives him enough health back to be able to turn the play in his favor. Well played from him. We're going to get a look back at it and going to keep track. He connects the first Q, flashes in, does get knocked up, but it doesn't matter because he's able to get those two blobs right underneath the tower, and then he's able to sustain up. Very well played from Adam. Just about. <laughs> Not the uh, reaction I expected. <laughs> you see, well, Adam was a reaction to, to the bot lane play. Yeah, I imagine that was more so what you saw there. But uh, Shale on the invade, just getting some control on this bottom side. Uh, the put the opportunity for Labrov to roam is basically going to revolve around them getting a lot of control on this bot side river. He, he wants to try and move in and help nuke as he gets push or at least secure nuke the roam because you know Jun wants to be able to get out, of, especially when you're playing with an Ezreal. So having this vision control in River is going to be really important for BDS to keep track of Jun and keep him in his place. Proxying from Adam. Nicely done. He had a nice stacked wave in top lane, forcing Oscar to go and catch that. So he can now get a really nice recall or even look for a row. Maybe has his eyes on mid lane. Instead, he's staying top. A little bit surprising, but I guess he doesn't really have much money. Wants to be in range with this play. Ah. So he jumps in with the elastic sing shot, gets the play. Oscar tries to trade with him, has the execution is calling. A bit of healing reduction. Let's bounce comes out from Adam. Oscar can look to chase this down. Adam with the grass proc. Oscar the healing. healing up once again. Plus 50, plus 50. Flash. Knock up. Oscar chases in the void. Rush enough. He sinks his fangs in. And Oscar gets a solo in the top. He's going to be able to push this wave reset and he'll have TP for the dragon fight as well. So Fnatic immediately set up that objective off the back of Oscar in and getting that win. But BDS. They aren't even going to try and contest. They know that Fnatic have the numbers advantage in this play. The fans can feel the momentum shifting. Fnatic, a team that when we saw a similar comp like this in game one, were passive. They were passengers on what was BDS driving the train. But now, Fnatic are the ones in the driver's seat. They continue to hold push in the bot lane. Oscar is finding winning trades in the top. While it didn't go in favor initially, it's now paying fruition. Razok setting his sights on bot lane. It's humanoid first to roam. Ice needs about five more minions to get level six, but he can't get it in time. Magnus Storm coming out from Razork. Reaper's wall in. The Emperor's Divide slams the door in the face of Nuke. One for one, though, underneath the tower. Great knockup from Labrov just before he died. He interrupts a crash down from Razork, so the return damage from Ice sticks as Razork tries to get away, and they're able to finish him off. So, yes, Humanoid stops them, but Labrov sets up the kill anyway. I mean, crucially, the... Ice is the one that got the kill, whereas Razor got it on the side of Fnatic. It's Jun that has all the goal lead right now because he was the one that got the double in the bot lane exchange. We look back at the dive. Crab first. Six foot, no, six foot <laughs> from Crab. Yeah, yeah. That's what they're showing us. <laughs> gets the six foot. Watch the, as the engage comes through here. So Jun ends up tanking up, just about gets out of carriage. Crash down happens. Labrov yeah, just gets nice. the knock up. And then, yes, Humanoid denies the entry. But with the damage that Ice is able to turn down because of that knock up, they get the kill back. Ultimately, you can see that Fnatic's rather happy about that sequence of events. 4-2 to two is now the kill score. 1k is the goal lead for Fnatic. As the saying goes, don't count the chickens before they hatch. And BDS have found miraculous teamfights before to turn this game around. And this is something that Fnatic have to demonstrate discipline on. Probably one of the biggest criticisms that we've seen from Fnatic and players so far is them with a lead, taking fights with a numbers disadvantage. And you know that BDS is a team that will punish you for making those mistakes. 
out of being forced out in the top lane 1v1 though you can see he just can't really trade with the rex side at all execution is calling early he seems to be working for oscar in it or maybe he's just playing the matchup that little bit better dragon up in two and a half minutes Shale looking around this mid lane but not really much doing for him here fanatic have got both of the neutral objectives in the early game adam's gonna jump in oscar in doesn't even get knocked up gets another plate Adam hits over to level 8. Oscar takes a couple of tower shots, but he won't really care about that. He's going to heal it up anyway. Yeah, Oscar has been doing a great job in the matchup of constantly standing on these blobs, and it means that then you just don't get that healing coming back from Adam, whereas Oscar is guaranteed to get that healing through, and even when you do, as you say, the execution's column, the Grimmie's Wounds helping out mastery, but control on top is Adam. Well, has the uh, GA available? Has that Soul Division passive. We'll bring him back to life. Razzle gets a fourth grub bds trying to play around this shouldn't the first to move lebob is level six fifth grub goes over to fanatic as well true shot barrage going wide humanoid looking to join the fight emperors divide into the magnet storm lebob in with the quickness lands a double charm razzle falling low ice the first to join the fight and noah's still in the bot lane bds have a man advantage now as ice splashes forward blast cones humanoid back who has to flash himself lebob dashing in and the weavers will all separate fanatic humanoid tries to escape but can't get away from BDS's clutches. Noah didn't roam. I started to move up, so BDS, they outnumber on the play and just about are able to claw those that go back. Will still get Noah getting some plates on the bottom side, so the gold lead is going to start to teeter with no, or sorry, we'll still be in favor of BDS, but we'll start to teeter back as Noah gets some of these plates, but nicely done by BDS to find that moment. So I will say that there are pros and cons to the play that BDS made. Yes, they did find themselves a kill onto Humanoid. And we'll look back at exactly how that happened. Crucially, as you both identified, the fact that Ice is already roaming up gives BDS a numbers advantage. Nice stun, connects onto Humanoid, mitigating a lot of the damage he's able to put out on the fight. And he's basically chain CC'd for the vast majority of it, but it is Razzuk that ends up falling. Humanoid then tries to escape. Nice auto attack on the Blast Cone, locks him up for the rest of his team to follow through. But they get Ice's flash, they get Lebrov's flash and they get Sheo's flash. Yep. With the dragon spawning in 49 seconds, Fnatic may feel confident enough to force this fight knowing that they have a pretty healthy summoner spell advantage and it could be an opportunity for them to win out on the long play. Yeah, I think it's, it's just with Ice having that ultimate available, I think they're still relatively fine to take the fight and even how mobile Labrov is, I think they should be okay to go for this still. So I'm gonna try and push in mid. I think the only thing you have to be worried about is um, the control that Fnatic will have over mid lane as they're just going to move Rel into position to help get that push. And we'll push on bot as well for Humanoid. Just BDS being a bit slow onto the map and moving nukes to the top side means that Fnatic will get into river first. Adam is already here. They've actually sent nuke up to the top lane, meaning that there's a two level difference now between the top laners. Adam with one more creep should be able to get to level nine. But Oscar building a very healthy advantage on the top side. Nuke with a nice trade onto Oscar. But he should be able to heal that back up. Jun sets his side on getting control of the river. Lebrov a little isolated. Very isolated. Good prediction from Jun with the dredge line. Lebrov can just dance away. We'll do it again. Noah looking for the mystic shot across the wall and lands it onto Lebrov. I don't know if they've spotted Zach though. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, they saw him on the way. Yeah, yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Oh. That ward as well as Adam goes in. Looking for humanoid. No flash, remember on the Emperor of Shurima, flash away by Adam from the dredge line. Razlok tanking up the Drake for now, can just dash out of the back of the pit. Ice has to move to get the wave in mid though, so that's why Fnatic are starting this up. And as he tries to move in, no one, Razor can immediately aggress on towards Ice, so Fnatic in a much better spot when it comes to just positioning and the link up they have with the team. Luke looking for the TP here, Oscar Winning can try and stop him, the Drake already secured. Razzle in the back of the pit, quickness to back, but he can still Feromancy over the wall and escape for the TP was invested by BDS. Fnatic, get the Drake and get out. I will say the lane assignments confuse me a little bit because by keeping Nuke top, you lose a lot of the zone control that this champion provides around this neutral. She's got great poke damage. The Weaver's Wall can be used to zone away the opponent to potentially buy time or stall. The idea overall being for BDS that I'm only going to TP in if I need to because I actually have pressure on this top side of the map. But ultimately, it's Fnatic that secure themselves the dragon. And uh, they don't really lose much as a result. And BDS burned double TPs in the sequence as well. Yeah, I think what they needed to do was proactively TP with Nuke rather than reactively TP with Nuke. He'd already got the push from Oscar in. And if you then TP, which is why Ice <clears throat> had abandoned Midwave to look for the play, I think you can then fight. But because they're late, it doesn't matter. Now, Fnatic in the jungle. 
Joe's going to meet Jun. Oscar in just around the corner. The chase continues with Lebov. Jun falling low. No flash for him. Dredge line riptide not enough to get him away as Lebov takes the kill. A bounty going over to the enemy supporter, but Oscar in and has his secret tunnels to escape to the safety of his tower. No support though, with Rift Child up and available, means the BDS should be able to take this. Even with Ice being first in the mid wave as well, they should get pushed. So, BDS, you can go for this, but are they going to try and bait us? Look for someone as they come in to contest? They don't have TPs and they don't really see anyone on the map right now. Oscar has TP, so he could come and join the fight. Joan already back out on the map. I still think it's worth in a 4v4. You already have the positioning, you've got mid push, so Noah can't really come in. You would have separated out Fnatic, it would have been four versus four, but I mean, MSI is on the line, your finals is on the line. I can understand being hesitant, but it means you don't get much off the back of that pick. Set to catch the bot wave, should be able to get level 11 relatively Duke is soon. moving up as well. Has the TP, and as you rightly said, new cast to make his way. There's the TP. Here we go. We're getting a brawl. Question is who will find the Shea advantage? on the front line. Crescent Guard goes down above with the knockup. Ice tries to put the damage down onto Joan Oscar. When he look for that flank, but it's Judd still alive. Magnus Storm on the back line. Humano trying to get in, but Nuke keeps him at bay for the moment. The quickness into the Feather Storm, into the pull back. You have to take from Ice. Razzle, Oscar Winnin dashes in, and Ice doesn't get the chance to pull the Feathers back. It's beautiful. From Fnatic, they found two, they found three. And now only Nuke can stand and watch as his team is routed. And he is six feet under. That is a five for zero, 15 minutes in. Just like game four, a clean ace for Fnatic around the Rift Herald will cement Fnatic's advantage in this game, who are looking to make the reverse sweep a reality. They managed to pick off Ice just before he can get the pullback in the feathers. I want to watch this again because... I wonder if he already used it on Jun. I was trying to track Maybe. it in the fight. But as we go forward here, so yeah, I had to use it there on Jun. Yeah. yeah, so it just didn't quite have it up and available. But Razork, great engage. This is what I'm saying. Razork in these skirmishes on rail is so clean for where he decides to take these fights. And even though you have the flash available for Ice, just not expect prepared for Oscar Inan to flash in on top of him. So getting that knock up crucial to picking off Ice and winning that fight for Fnatic. This is why I think that the uh, Rek'Sai is such an effective champion against Zyra in particular, because even once the feathers are used, the moment that you've got another tunnel available, you can immediately commit to the back line once more. And it's such an obnoxious champion to have to deal with. We've seen it so many times. We've seen Broken Blade diving towers against Desire on this champion as well. And Oscar Renin is having a monster performance. 4 1 and 2 on the rec site. A priority pick in the draft, working wonders for Fnatic. And after having such a nightmare in the first couple of games, what a step up it is for him. Fnatic, 17 minutes in, 4,000 gold ahead. Lebrov looking for Noah. He still has the flash in the arcane shift. It's going to be difficult for them to catch him. There's the flash immediately. And the quickness from Lebrov. Razor looking for the flank position. Doesn't really have the follow-up as of yet. Shadowing Strike gonna get knocked up with the three talent strike from Sheo. Humanoid moving in from the side as well. But Fnatic still control top side. You can't really move in as Adam if you're gonna run into a lot of members on Fnatic. Pushing bot Ross Gurin and as well as giving Fnatic a ton of control in this bot side jungle and mid lane with Dragon just under 30 seconds. BDS playing so reactionarily now. Flash, hook, death charge onto Nuke, the Magnus Storm in as well as BDS look for something. Jun tried to get the engage, Adam dives onto the back line, Razzle the first to fall, but so down will go Sheo, another kill as Noah goes down, Oscar gets onto the back line though and somehow salvages something from the fight. BDS though come out on top as Fnatic dived way too deep. Nuke just barely got the Unraveled Earth off before he went down and Humanoid thought he was dead, so Humanoid launches himself in, stuns himself, and BDS close out the fight. Unbelievable throw from Fnatic. A huge misplay from Humanoid at the very end, but an overcommitment that Fnatic didn't need to make. The safe play is to get a bit of damage, retreat, retreat to the dragon. But the flash in from Jun, I think at this point it's okay, but at this point you're overcommitting. Keep your eyes on Noah. He's going to make one step too far. Oh, the knockback in from Nuke. That I didn't see. Well played from him. And then you're going to see the Earth come through again. It stuns up Humanoid. No ultimate available. Great punish. Adam secures a triple kill. And even as the crash down goes to come through from Razork, Labrov again gets the interrupt with the knock-up. Yeah. It means they can't get the CC that they need. So BDS finding 
a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. They got to try and see if they can use that to claw this game back into their favor. They're going to try and push out side lanes, make sure Fnatic haven't got access, but at least the Dragon going over towards them is big. Yuna has no flash here. BDS trying to collapse. They'll just clear out the control ward and back away. It is 1,500 gold between these two teams. BDS have given up ghosts on this mid lane tier two, and it is on a knife's edge. Every fight feels like it could be the last of either of these two teams' spring splits. Remember, G2 await the victor tomorrow. And a lot of very good teams wait the victor in Chengdu, China, later on this month. Actually, next month. Adam jumps in, Oscar winning, tanking the tower, pull back with the stretching strike. Adam doesn't have that cell division passive, but he does have a lot of healing. Nuke going in with the Weaver's wall, and all the Fnatic will be able to get on the right side of it. Above was looking for the flank, he can't find it, he's spotted an award. TP in by Humanoid as he joins his team in this bot lane. Ice not there with them as BDS will try and cull this wave, but Ice is clearing out mid. Can he get across here in time to help out? Because there's a cannon minion here, tanks up a couple of tower shots. The tower's still standing though. Still three casters. Makes it difficult for BDS. Flash forward from Nuke. He thought he had Humanoid. He couldn't find him. Fnatic continue to just try and brute force their way down mid. They do have a bit of control. Sorry, bot, I should say. They do have a bit of control over mid. But they're just continuing to chip away. They're trying to rely on Noah's poke here. Adam. Primarily using his wave clear. Oscar in, in the engage. The storm in the double stun. It's beautiful for Fnatic. That's what they were looking for on the mid, the mid lane tier two and they find it in bot Sheo forced away Fnatic buying three only Nuke and Sheo left standing 20 minutes they're not going to push for the inhibitor but Fnatic with a well executed dive find three and all of them survive as soon as Adam had used that elastic slingshot Razork knew there was not really going to be any way to disrupt his own backline so immediately goes in Adam used it just try to put pressure on but you can see Razork responds instantly on towards ice immediately shuts it down and he's so tanky and with the chase down that this rex has with the ultimate so nearly get chill but just not quite able to get it oscar and razork finding some incredible engages throughout this game this story the story of this game really has been about those two 14 kills to 11 it's close but the gold is not Four and a half K now the lead for Fnatic and just like that they're gonna start off the Baron. Razlok smiting early, hoping it will be back up. Just trying to pull BDS into this fight. TP into the mid lane from Nuke has that Weaver's wall available. Ice has flash from Feather Storm. The quickness, the possibility from LeBrock. All of Fnatic on this side of the wall as Adam looks to try and engage. Junt going in, stretching strike, pulls back to the Emperor's Divide. It's good though, but Humanoid knocked back with the seismic shot. Baron's gonna go over to Fnatic with already lost two members. And Oscar in it might be next on the menu for BDS. The dash in, the knock back as Oscar pulls low and will fall down. Buried in the ground with his two Razork. teammates. Razork failed the hex flash across the wall and the chase continues for BDS. He tries to get away, but he's knocked up with a three talent trike. Noah trying to get away as well. And perhaps Fnatic once again have been a little bit too greedy on this. Only Noah left standing with the Baron buff. That is not worth at all. You're going to lose so much gold off of all those kills. You're going to lose the top tower, lose the mid tower. And you can already see the Red Bull Baron power play is in deficit to start with. I mean, it wouldn't be a Fnatic series if we didn't have a bit of a fiesta, right? Game five, MSI on the line. They forced the Baron. And the game plan was to just deny BDS TP. access into Joe's the pit. Catch this. Oscar Winning trying to get him behind them. No flash on him. Lebov does have the quickness back up. Oscar Winning just doing the damage here. Knock up from Lebov. He'll dash back to Sheo. So the TP invested to hold on to that mid lane tier one. Hasn't fallen yet. Adam got the top lane tier one. So less gold bled out from Fnatic than could have been. It stopped the resets though with 30 seconds of the dragon, so Fnatic should be able to get into that. But you see here, Razorak and Noah are the only ones in the pit, so BDS just collapse onto the rest of them and completely take them on in the fight. Humanoid standing on the other side of the wall, he's thinking, I have ultimate, but I can keep DPSing the Baron. But then the flash in from Adam was the crucial play because Humanoid just couldn't react in time. Now, this is even worse from Razor because he tries to leap over it and then he fails the hex flash as well. Two attempts, two failures, a Baron gone. Only Noah left standing as BDS. <laughs> I, <but laughs> yeah, I think that's that that the sums general up. Yeah, that's yeah. A great. Thank you, Kadrol, for that analysis. The crowd chants. The game is not even. Fnatic still in the lead, 3K. But you look at the bottom of your screen and you have to look at the itemization. 
as it slowly starts to get closer between the two teams. Three fully completed items for Noah, two and a half for Ice, two and a half for Nuke, two and a half for Humanoid. The carries are catching up on the side of BDS and Fnatic can't afford to make any more blunders before BDS find a way to turn this game around. Still though, Fnatic have the advantage in wave states. They're gonna start pushing in. BDS don't really have vision. Labrov doesn't really, I was gonna say, have uh, someone to dash to, but still has the W to try and get out of here. BDS now fully committed towards this top side. Fnatic have just kind of abandoned every other lane. They're like, we are just going to try and brute force again. We have one Baron buff. Let's see what we can do with it. 10 seconds before that leaves, they sh will get top tower. BDS not willing to fight for it. BDS give it up. 4,000 gold in the hole. The Baron about to expire. 500 gold lost from it by Fnatic. And the game, once again, takes a second to breathe as we all do with three and a half minutes on the cloud soul for Fnatic and three minutes before the Baron comes back up. Three items on Noah. Question is, can BDS get onto that back line? Because that's, that's been what's happened. Like Fnatic have over-invested in trying to kill BDS. And so BDS have had access to that back line. If Fnatic don't dive in, can BDS actually kill them? I think it's going to become very difficult for BDS not only from the perspective of... Oh, hang on, Labra. I don't know if there's a I think Raz was just fun. playing for the but, um, ward, yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's the fact that you're not going to be able to move outside your base. Oscar in, pushes in boss. Fnatic already on the mid wave. Yes, you'll have top wave pushed out, but realistically, as long as Fnatic threaten both mid and boss, you just can't move out of your own base. So trying to find these moments where you're not just face checking into Fnatic is going to be next to impossible with the next dragon, which almost guarantees soul. So I think these next three minutes are going to be relatively quiet as Fnatic just continue to steal the jungle, plant vision, deny BDS access to the map. It's very much a dead state, but it is Fnatic's map for now. As you rightly said, Dagda, BDS are forced to play defensive. The base is the only safe haven they have to play around as Fnatic's vision denial only continues to grow. A minute and a half until Baron, two and a half until Dragon. Fnatic continuing to mount up the damage that they have. And we've said it once, we'll continue to say it again, MSI on the line, a swan in the finals tomorrow against G2. It would be an opportunity for both these teams to rematch G2. But it all comes down to this final game. The tension continues to mount. One minute until the big purple were returns to the rift. Fnatic pushed through the mid lane. You can see BDS have invested their vision defensively in their own side of the jungle. No wards past the halfway mark of the river. Razork steps in. It's the Abyssal Mask now as well, just to help the damage output of Humanoid. We continue to see Oscar controlling the bot wave. Has the TP available, ticked over to level 15. He's keeping that pressure up and going back to base. I'm curious as to what he's going to have enough gold for. There is a couple of wards that you can use for BDS to try and TP in. You can see this one up here and one in behind on the bot side as well. So they are aware that if Fnatic try to brute force their way into something, they have angles of attack. You can set up for Nuke to have a Weaver's Wall from that position. Adam can come in onto the back line just to disrupt them there without having to use his leap to get in. So BDS trying to get this moment where they can set up a team fight against Fnatic. I wonder if Nuke has just got another needlessly large rod or if he's, actually, if he's actually managed to finish the Rabadons. It's just a second. Doesn't quite have his third item yet. Adam, that wave in the top lane, will slowly push it towards Fnatic. Sundus going down in the mid lane as Fnatic continue just to try and deny vision around this Baron. 40 seconds as well on Soul. Wait for that. Seismic shove just behind Noah and in front of Jup. Yeah, I think Fnatic basically want to try and get both objectives up at the same time, so then they can play off of both. Um, Labrov in the pit, going to dodge back out to Shale, but if Fnatic can basically control mid-wave, they can decide essentially what they want to do. Play in the darkness, maybe even have a single member finish off Dragon as they just keep up the pressure on BDS. But BDS without the vision to understand what Fnatic are up to will never be able to respond. Objective. Objectives, rather, are returning onto the map. BDS continue to play defensive, knowing that for one of these teams, it is the last game of the spring, the first half of their year. 
It's BDS with control and it's BDS to Humanoid's start the objective. Humanoid's on the Drake. Humanoid's doing the Drake with Noah. They're both on the bottom side of the map. BDS is going to start out the Baron because they want to call Fnatic into a fight. Fnatic have Noah. inclination. Yeah, Noah and Humanoid already sprinting up here. It's down to 6,000, as you say, pretty quick. Lebrov keeping Oscar in at bay. BDS looking for the Baron. They peel off it. It sticks at 3,000. They look for Chun. He flashes away. Death charge on the back line as well. Adam falling low. The Cell Division still available to him, though, as Oscar winning just trading with Icy Void watches forward. The Baron secured. It's Shea who takes it. Ice kills off Oscar winning. Adam's gonna fall, though. Four members of BDS still alive. They'll weave his wall out, and Lebrov was not back into the waiting arms of Fnatic, but BDS get the Baron and get out. BDS can probably hold with that. Having their minions just in front of their base with this Baron will make it very tough for Fnatic to end it. Fnatic will get the soul, but that could be just barely enough for BDS to hold. I mean, incredible stuff from BDS. I respect the confidence in a high pressure situation like this. They have to make the call and they commit to the Baron. Ice gets locked on by so many members. Sidesteps that. Uses side, the, the, the stretching strike actually pulls Razzle back out. So Ice isn't oh, caught Nuke. in the Magnus Storm anymore. Nuke went for a push here, and Noah just immediately shuts oh. him out. TP in by Humanoid behind. Adam's going to try and push out midway, but Nuke was greedy. He didn't reset after the Baron. Yeah, he gets punished. It's a shame we didn't get to see the end of the replay because I wanted to highlight how well Ice played it. You're right, Adam once again providing the peel that he needed for his AD carry. And thanks to that, Ice was able to actually shut down Oscar. But now Nuke gets punished on the map. Losing a crucial Baron buff. The gold gap has closed dramatically. BDS suddenly back into this game. Fnatic have to go for the play on mid though. This is the only wave that they can actually make and play on before Nuke comes back up. Ice going to be able to clear this one out before it really connects. So you've got top wave, but 10 seconds until Nuke is up. I think you can just clear this out as well as BDS. This is the big benefit you get from those Baron up creeps. It's so easy to just stand on the creeps and Fnatic can't push the wave in. No TP wards for Nuke when he is up. I don't really see that flank TP. You can see one control ward being pinged out by Fnatic on the blue buff. They're going to push down towards this bottom side. Looks like Humanoid's going to catch that wave and shove it in. Lads, it's all coming down to one fight. Yep. It's going to be one big fight at this Elder Dragon. And whoever smites it, whoever wins that fight, that's going to be the game. That is it. That is everything. I respect that series. you're optimistic enough to believe it'll only be one fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll wait and see how many left. But... Uh, Elder is in four and a half minutes, and honestly, I think it will come down to that. But um, you never know in Fnatic games, I will be honest. BDS are putting up a valiant effort. Backs are definitely against the wall, but they've been able to successfully close the gap. We're going to look back at the pro view from uh, Noah. Interrupts with the ultimate to start things off, then uses the E into Q connect. Look at the damage from the Q as well. And just flawlessly done. Doesn't miss a single Q. It's 5-1-11 on this Ezreal, almost full build, sitting the BF sword. He completes that. Nuke looking for an objective bounty here in the bottom lane. Does have the TP to join up with his team. Mid lane push coming out from Fnatic. That's Baron about to expire seven seconds ago. As you say, Oscar winning pushing in top. Lebrov looking for flank. He's on a war chair going in. There's a TP as well. Oscar in the top lane is already on that inhibitor tower. Humanoid dances across and immediately demolishes the, the, the standing tower. Oscar on the front line, Adam lets bounce but can't find it, the hook lands, Ice pops away from the depth charge, but he's gonna land afterwards, Noah's already got one as the buff falls low, Nuke falling low as well, and the fight might not even be around the Elder, because Fnatic have found it in the top lane, they'll take the inhibitor, they're not gonna push for more, no minion wave yet, but will they go for the win, Oscar backing, he can TP in. Right now the debate is happening within Fnatic, Oscar choosing to reset they're waiting for the next wave three members still alive ice crucially still alive flash barely off cooldown as the wave makes connection with the tower oscar has tp to keep the minion wave alive he can tp on but adam goes adam looks for it magnus storm on the back line ice locked up and ice has been absolutely melted fanatic break the hearts of the bds fans they will lock their spot at msi and then have a rematch with g2 tomorrow The reverse sweep from Fnatic. It looked disaster from the get-go in those first two games. But the fact they managed to pull through game three to get to this game five, to get into this early game where Razark was monstrous, 
Noah looking fantastic and Oscar in and on this wreck side causing so much disruption for BDS. I wasn't expecting it to end the way that it did. You can of course vote for your gear player of the series at LEC on X, Razork, Noah or Jun. All excellent candidates. It's been a pretty back and forth series overall. Incredibly close. But it is Fnatic that make the reverse sweep happen. Congratulations once again to Fnatic. And they lock a spot at MSI and a rematch for G2 in the finals. Fnatic have looked absolutely incredible in the last three games. They now have to try and wipe off what was a very tough five games for them to try and face up against G2 tomorrow. But a well-earned spot in MSI, but heartbreak for BDS twice. They've been one game away from going to MSI, and twice they've been denied that opportunity in spring. And Fnatic in the last three games just outplayed them. When Fnatic got an early game lead, it was very hard to wrestle it away from them. And that just constantly putting the pressure down, making BDS make difficult decisions. And overall, all credit to them, it looked dead and done for after the first two games, but Fnatic were not willing to go out without a fight. Yeah, I mean, the, the adaptations that Fnatic needed to make, they did make. They showcased some great stuff in the game five as well. And uh, overall, very impressive stuff. I still think there's things they need to work on. G2 is not going to be an easy opponent for them tomorrow. The last time we saw them play, it was a very one-sided affair in favor of G2. But uh, yeah, what uh, impressive stuff from Fnatic to make that reverse sweep a reality. I'm ready. I think Razor, absolutely fantastic. I think he played absolutely stellar yeah. in that last game. Yeah, he really did. We're going to hand it over to an interview with Oscar and Noah. I believe Law is standing by on stage. Take it away. And Razzle's on PGL. The mic is on. You guys want to talk maybe already? Congratulations. Check out all in the dark. Ready to get it. Wow. It is. It is the second time Fnatic manages to reverse sweep. Tell me about these two last games and how did you come back into the series, Noah? I mean, today I think uh, I'm not playing with Jerry, so I just said, like, just uh, bend Jerry and play. And I, I came back, you know? <laughs> it was an amazing performance and fantastic pentakill as well. We're going to check it a bit later, but first, Oscar Rinin, how does it feel about reaching finals again? Uh, it feels nice to play finals now and to yeah. go to MSI. Uh, <laughs> Like, I think it also feels mega nice to reverse sweep because, yeah, we were 0 2 and I think there was a lot of pressure yeah. to perform and everything, and we did it, so it feels mega nice that in these situations we can make it. I know. Tell me about, tell me about the switch, though, this switch of momentum. After losing game two, you guys came back. What happened backstage? How did you manage to come back? I mean, we, we were talking, and like, we knew that we were a better team, but we were just not playing aggressive enough, I think. We were not making practice plays uh -huh. or anything. And then we, when we were still 2 we said, OK, guys, let's play like we used to. You know, we picked the Bolivar, we picked the tools to actually make things happen. And we played aggressive, and yeah, we made things happen, I guess, in the uh, games. Yeah, aggressive and trusted yourself. Noah, tell me about this confidence, because you tweeted, BDS got sent home last year by Chasey. This year, I'm sending you guys home. You're not going to MSI. And I want... <laughs> Tell me about uh, this confidence, you, and we're going to watch the Pentakill again, like, because I want to know what happened maybe there as well. Everyone remember last year's spring, BDS win-win and lose, 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 and couldn't uh -huh. go MSI. I want to make it again, you know. And you made it again with this play yes. as well. Tell me what happened here. What was the communication like when you made this Pentakill happen and come back to the game? I mean, we knew. I, I have a. I'm so. I'm so fast. So I knew if we fight, we won. We will win. So yeah, we just fight. You know. It was an amazing game, and honestly, fantastic ways for you guys to turn games around. But focusing on what you guys have. Yeah, amazing play. Yeah, Oscar. Anything you want to tell me about this play and what was happening with Combs and how you made him get his penta kill? Maybe. I mean, I was shouting penta, 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 <laughs> like he. Ivan didn't want to give it since he was gonna die, right? But uh, <laughs> then he has died, and yeah, no, I could take yeah. it. For if, three. if Marek said, yeah. if Marek had mana, he will. He was taking, you know. But <laughs> he has no mana, so lucky. No mana, lucky. <laughs> Noah, 
I know that you going to MSI means that there's a special reunion that I want to see happen. I want you to see Roller. I want you to play against Roller. But he hasn't qualified yet. Yes. What? He hasn't qualified yet. Do you ah, think yeah, he can yeah. make it? Yeah, he can make it, for he, sure. You told me he talked to you recently. What did he tell you? I mean, I, I was talking with Roller yesterday. And we talked something. And we said good luck and fighting each other. So I want to Roller win tomorrow. Full trust in this, and trusted by the Kimi himself. Noah, you got players of the series today. Congratulations oh, on this. You. Are you happy about it? Yeah, I mean, I thought maybe Jun will get, so it's fine, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fans chanting for you. It is completely deserved. Thank you to the fans. Chica Dorimeda once again. Thank you so much, Felicitades, yeah. for so making it, it to finals. And fans, we're waiting for you in the fan area for PGL with Shox and Razork. Take it away, dear. Thank you. And me. <laughs> and you. <laughs>